Do you eat edamame on daily basis? <sighs> What's your type of food? Edamame? Everyone can sing along because like Hello everyone, welcome back to the newest episode of Vinear and welcome to the cave. Today we got a baby no money. That's my name, man. Okay, but, but your real name is Alexander Leon Gumuchan. Gumuchan, yeah. It's Gumu- either you say it like Gumuchan. Gumuchan. But no one really knows how to pronounce it or pronounce it uh, like an Armenian tone. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, Gumuchan's not bad. It's close. You you almost got it, man. Almost. Yeah. But I'm going to call you Alex yeah. or Baby No Money. You can call me Baby. <laughs> Shit. Okay. One minute in and we're this close. Okay, so Alex, uh, baby. So baby, <laughs> how's Jakarta so far, man? It's been good. Uh, I'm like 10 out of 10 tired, but we're still here. And I, you know, the first thing I did when I touched down is I went to a Rendang, Rendang for beef Rendang. And like- Rendang. Yeah, well, no, no, no. But we went to this restaurant. It's like, a, they bring a bunch of plates out. Oh, uh, Restaurant Padang. Padang. Padang, yes. We Padang. Call it Padang. I, I, I feel like I've been mispronouncing it wrong the whole time, but okay. like, I feel like whenever someone else says it, I'm like, how am I, mi-? like, how am I missing it? <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. And that was delicious. I've never, I've never had better beef and dong. Do you remember what's the name of the Padang? Padang. Yeah. I uh, what do you mean? The, the, the restaurant. Do you remember the name? Oh no. no it's just somewhere you eat somewhere. Wait, what, so what does Padang mean? So, uh, because I thought that's the restaurant. I, that's what I thought the restaurant name was, but I guess it's the style. Of, it's the style, yeah. Uh, okay, it's, okay, style. Cool, cool. it's like a barbecue. We have a lot of barbecue. It's like yeah. Padang. We have a lot of Padang. Ah, okay, cool. But yes, that's our pride. Yeah. It was really close to a tattoo parlor. Tattoo parlor. Means absolute. I know this city's ginormous, so that's probably not going to help you at all. But I went there and it was good. And uh, I will go back again one time. So you you ate rendang? Yeah. You yeah. like it? Super good. Was it spicy? It wasn't like- Spicy, spicy? It wasn't spicy, spicy. I can do spice pretty well. I would say like the only thing that I ever uh, encounter like difficulties with is like really spicy papaya salad. That That's just always the worst. I always I always find that they, they over spice it in Thailand. It's just like- Oh, in Thailand. Yeah, yeah. it's just like so unnecessary. You're- but- Going to Thailand in this yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow you're going yeah, to tomorrow. Thailand. Okay, you're going. Uh, you're on a Asia tour. Yeah, uh, following your upcoming album, which is Back or Die. Yeah, which will be released on 21st of October. Yeah, congratulations, man. Thank you, man. You're currently on a tour. You have been to Kuala Lumpur. You have been to Singapore, Vietnam. Well, I didn't actually get into KL because, oh. uh, yeah, Malaysia, I guess, banned me. They didn't. They didn't like my music. So, um, what? What did you do? Man? I mean, supposedly someone came up to me and was like, "Because you had the photo of your pants off on stage, photo." Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They yeah, were I like, saw, "Yeah, saw. there's no way they're gonna allow you in." So, like, I had like two or three people say, "Like, yo, you should take it down." I was like, I, "Whatever." I mean, why would they? Why would they not allow me in? But they definitely didn't allow me in. So, so you so skipped. I had to skip Malaysia, yeah, yeah. unfortunately. Okay, but you had your show yesterday here yeah. with a bunch of Indonesian artists. Yeah, it was which great. You, you have Raman Girl, you have Ariel Nayak, and Rico, and a bunch of other uh, Indonesian talents. Uh, what do you think about them? Honestly, so usually I don't like having anyone backstage because I, I like my peace and quiet before, but after shows, I don't care at all. Okay. But like, they were all so nice. Every single one of them was just like the nicest person ever, and it was like very chill. Like, it was very, very good. I honestly, like, I've been talking to Raman Girl all day today. She's hilarious. And uh, she is, she is. yeah, she's really, really funny. Um, and I'm doing a show with her in Thailand too. So, oh, she's so, coming with you. Yeah, she's coming with me. And cool, uh, cool, cool. so, yeah, we get some more time to hang out and uh, it, it's good. I, I actually like like all their music too. It's great. Everything everything about last night was really, really fun. It was Un- fun. Unfortunately, we're going against the uh, s- synchro. The, the synchronized. Yeah, synchronized. synchronized. So we're going against that. So we didn't sell too many tickets, but... Um, the vibe was there. There was tons of people. There, my my diehard fans were there, and it was a it was a good time. So it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, so uh, talking about Bagory Die, uh, what's the album about? Man, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's never about anything. I I don't really write music contextually. Like okay. I don't. 
I don't know if anyone really does, you know, like people can write albums and tell like, I could say that my album is about me growing up and becoming an adult. And like, you know, everyone would be like, oh, that's so profound, bro. Like, <laughs> nice, man. But in actuality, like, it's just me putting a bunch of music together and me going to the studio on separate different days and being like, let's say this, let's say this, and then just smash them all together and figure out how they fit the best. Um, so that's kind of it. Uh, long story short, though, I mean, Beggar Die, it's a playoff, Get Rich or Die Trying. Okay. And, uh, you know, 50 Cent is a big inspiration. And that album in itself is like one of the best rap albums ever made. Mm -hmm. But I think mine's better. So <laughs> yours is better. 50, come and fight me, bro. I'm, <laughs> I'm a hands on site, my guy. You can pay me to fight me and get me in the ring. So I know you have more money than me. So beg or die, baby. Beg or die. He, he would baby. definitely beat the shit out of me. <laughs> but I, at least you went into the ring. At least you went 50. in the ring with 50, baby. Yeah. Okay. So talking about you as a musician yourself, um, how how did your journey with music start? Were you like always wanted to be a musician? No, not at all. No. I was I was at university and I was like studying and stuff. And uh, a bunch of my friends and I were like super, super bored one day. And, you know, in BC, well, in Canada now, marijuana is legal. So we were smoking the big legal kush. Woohoo. And uh, I don't, I don't really smoke weed anymore, but uh, we were chilling, hanging out and we we're like, what are we supposed to do? Cause we were just faded doing absolutely nothing. Cause that's usually what you do when you get faded. And then we ended up making music. And oh. at that like moment, the exact moment I made like my first song, I was like, damn, this is really fun. And I don't know how else to put it. Like it was just kind of a euphoric experience. Um, I was 19 at the time. So it was about like eight ish years ago. And yeah, it was like, it was like a dream come true. Cause I was like, I used to be an athlete and then I broke my back. So I had a bad injury and then okay. I just kind of lost everything. And then I found everything in one exact moment. And it was beautiful, I guess. You know, as cliche and cringy as that might sound, but it was, it was beautiful. It was like sensational. It was like an orgasm. And, uh, here we are, you know, I'm in, I'm in fucking Jakarta, like, Jakarta. like with my music, you know, it's like a, it's a beautiful experience because my parents are proud, you know, it's like, what, what, do, what else does it really matter? And like, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's really, really cool. I get to do it, whatever I want to do every day. It's, it's a blessing for sure. So for all the kids in Jakarta, when you're like, don't know what to do, smoke weed, and then you'll figure it Definitely out. don't smoke weed because okay. I heard you get big time arrested out here. If you get caught. Well, yeah, we high as fuck right now, baby. <laughs> okay. Catch me if you can. Catch me if you can, poo poo. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Uh, what do you like most about your current upcoming album, Back or Die? Is it the process or is it the songs or is it like, do you have like one significant song that you really like or like, this is uh, fucking me? I just, I yeah, I don't know. Uh, usually when it comes to albums, I put like two, three really good songs on it. And then I like, I kind of put some garbage in it because like, truthfully, like no one really listens to albums, you know, like, like, and it, we're, we're traversing through a world where people is a, people's attention spans have just been depleted, like absolutely yeah. annihilated because of TikTok and social media, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, so that, that was my original process. I was like, fuck it. Like why, why, why give them every single song and then not just release it as a single where there's so much more like traction on that one song, mm. you know, just thinking it as, a, as like a, uh, as a business. Right. But this time I, I genuinely put songs on it. Like, 14 songs that I genuinely think are all single worthy. And this is the first time I've ever done it wholeheartedly. And, uh, you know, every single friend of mine that is like always not a yes man, like everyone who always says X, Y, Z, like, like, this is bad. This is good. This is good. This is bad. They've all collectively said it's my best project without question. So I'm really excited to put it out. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm doing this one for myself. I'm actually really curious to see if doing what I'm saying I'm doing, putting a bunch of good music on, if it makes a functional difference. Because I don't think it does. But I just listened to JID's, like JID's uh, Forever Story album. Okay. And that, that album is album of the year, 100%. It's like the best rap project for sure, in my in my opinion. You know, obviously it's all just opinions. But, <laughs> you know, that that's kind of the concept of Beggar Dies, just the best project I can humanly make. So like, I even had like a radio station, like give me a text saying like, yo, we just listened to the full album from Australia. And they were like, it's really good, man. You should be proud. Like people 
someone said that to me randomly. So it's cool. You know, it's like, I'm not going to complain. I'll take that. So so 14 songs with no garbage songs. Yeah, no garbage. You, you pour your whole life, heart, and everything. I mean, I don't know about pouring my whole life and heart and into it, but I definitely poured something into something. it. <laughs> <laughs> definitely poured something into it. Oh, okay. of- All across the Asia tour. <laughs> Yeah. Which city was the most memorable for you? Excluding Bangkok. I mean, I, I've done Bangkok once, uh, but I guess I haven't done it yet. So um, it was funny. So <laughs> I get to Vietnam. Okay. Ho Chi Minh City. And mm. uh, <laughs> we get to the venue and they're like, yo, this is your set list for tonight. And I'm like, what? And like, this is, this, these are the songs you're playing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Uh, they're like, hey, so we have dancers for this song. You're going to bring this guy up for this song. You're going to do this little skit for this song. You're going to come out on stage wearing a helmet that has a, your face on it. And you're all, you're all going to be wearing suits. So no one knows who it really is. You're going to be dancing. And I was like, what? <laughs> and also when we got to the venue, <laughs> They they hadn't even looked at the production rider, okay. so they did, dude. The guys, the produ- the production team didn't even know what an XLR cable is, and I'm like, bro, like an XLR cable is literally this, okay. this right here yeah, into you know what I mean, like in, yeah, and I, they didn't know. They were giving out balloons, like huffing balloons in the venue. That's how that's how lit they were, but I mean the show was so funny. It was just like half the crowd was not even there. They were just there to drink. And then the other half of the crowd was just like crazy baby, no money fans. And um, <laughs> the the security guards were drinking bottles, out of, drinking bottles. It was, it was fucking ridiculous. I, I love Vietnam. Vietnam is- <laughs> It's one I'm of tra- the chaotic- Chaos, chaos. chaos. I love it. I love it. Uh, definitely, definitely the most memorable. Singapore was like tame. It was like, mm. we get to the venue. This was like night and day. The venue was like, here's everything. The mics were pre-checked. Everything was like so, so perfect. Okay. And then, uh, and then, yeah. So it's just like the AB comparison of uh, uh, Singapore to uh, Vietnam. Vietnam. It's like chaos and then very controlled. <laughs> so it's a, it's been a good time, honestly. Like I, I used to, when I first blew up in music, I, I blew up in China, and uh, you know the shows are pretty similar. Like the, it, it's just like kind of chaos. It, you know, it's fun. It's really, it's really a good time. You never know what's going to happen. I remember this one time in Guangzhou, sorry for just rambling, but this one time in Guangzhou, I get to this venue and he's like, the promoter's like hundred percent gang affiliated, like <laughs> super tough. Like he shows up to some like random, he picks me up at the airport and he like goes and picks us up a massive bag of cash, just like at some apartment building. I'm like, all right, cool. And then he takes us to the venue. He's like, Hey, so I'm going to be selling merch. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, it's like, I made merch of your face. I was like, cool. Like, yeah, just pay me the money. He's like, nah. And I'm like, the fuck? Like, the fuck? And <laughs> it's you. It was so weird, bro. Like such weird vibes. And uh, what happened? What happened with the merch? Well, it all sold out and I didn't get a penny. <laughs> but I remember, I remember, I haven't really talked to him recently, but for like a year and a half in a row, every week I would text him and be like, bro, where's my fucking money, bro? Where's my fucking money, bro? On WeChat, I'd be like, I send him voice notes. He'd be like, oh, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send the cops on you, bro. Where's my money, bro? <laughs> I just as a joke, cause I was like, fuck it, like fuck this guy, man. He just, he just profited off my face super hard. But uh, yeah, gang affiliated. It was hundred percent, like hundred percent. Like it was like people would like, like be frightened when he would walk in the room. Type One of thing. those tribes. Yeah, thing, it, yeah, it was sick. <laughs> It'd be sick as fuck. So, <laughs> so scary, man. And th- this was, it, you know, it's funny because like this was like my introduction into like doing shows. Okay. So I went from I went from you know doing like kinesiology and telling my professors to be like, yo, look, look, I got I got shows booked in Asia or in China, and I like I'm I will be making money, and I need to leave. So like, please give me a pass on like not doing this midterm, not doing this test. And they were like, sure. So I just go from like writing a test, fly to China, do a show hang out with like a gangster and then <laughs> fucking come back and do Adderall and keep studying. Just the, just the way of life, man. It was a interesting transition. It is what it is. Yeah, I it guess. is what it is. So China is um, memorable for you. Yeah. Vietnam is also, did you end up doing the skits with a helmet and dancing? Yeah, and I did everything. Cause they were like, you have to do it. And I was like, well, I don't, but I'm not trying to piss anyone off because <laughs> I'm also trying to get paid here. So. <laughs> Last time someone sold merch in my face, I didn't get paid. So, 
<laughs> Might as well just do yeah, it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah. Do what the fuck you're told to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So, but with the name, your name is Alex. Alexander Leon. Yeah. But you came up with the name, a stage name, Baby No Money. Yeah. Ooh, what's up with that? Baby No Money is just, it, this kind, it's kind of like an ethos where it's like, you don't need money to to make, you know, art. You don't, you don't need a... I, you know, I don't really know what, how to tell you, but like the best, the best way to describe what Baby No Money is, is how I got the name. So how I got the name is one, I'm the youngest of the family and two, I'm really cheap. So I like, don't like spending my money. I, I have no reason to, you know, it's, I, I really believe in the need want principle. Okay. And it's like, you know, I'm wearing a $1 jacket, like a lit, it's literally a dollar. I got it at a dollar store. Um, and you know, it's, 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 it's pretty comfortable. It's a little, it's a woman's up, it's a woman's jacket. So it doesn't really fit me well. So I'm mm-hmm. like, I need to pull my shoulders back often. But it's a dollar. It's a fucking dollar. Who cares? Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I like, there's this weird overarching ethos where it's like, you, you can do all this music stuff by yourself and you don't need help. And you know, me staying independent is kind of like a, like a, like a truce pack to myself okay. where I'm just like, fuck the industry. Like I'm just going to keep doing me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I've offered a, a platform for, you know, like-minded individuals and like my fans who like, you know, they look up to me, for instance, and it's just like, I'm, I'm just doing me. And like, I feel like whenever I do shows and I do meet and greets, like every single person is like exactly like me. They're all just like weirdos. weirdos. And, and like, I'm a fucking weirdo. So it's sick. You know, I'm a, I used to play World of Warcraft. I have three years in, oh. of Gabe time in World of Warcraft. And my mom used to disconnect the internet all the time. So... And all my fans come up to me and they're like, yo, man, like I played this video game. I'm like, hell yeah, that's fire. So <laughs> it's sick. Okay, so are, are you going to change your name since now you're successful? No. Maybe get money? Never. Maybe get bitches? <sighs> no. No? Uh, I wish. <laughs> um, but uh, I will change my name. When I'm done with being Baby No Money, I'm going to become Father Cash. Father Cash. And I'm going to, what I will do is, I've always had this idea is, I will sign myself to a record label and then I will just use, I will like, it, it'll be like country music. So I'll go down to Nashville and I'll write country music and it'll be super, super, you know, synthesized by the industry. So I do literally nothing. I don't write my music. I don't do shit. I like, someone writes me like a word to say, I'll say it. I just want to be the exact like rep like replica of what the industry portrays. Okay. I like, I don't know. I've always had it. It would be really, really fun to like do a social experiment type thing. Father Cash. So, uh, Father Cash, yeah. We'll be waiting, Father Cash. Father Cash. <laughs> it's like, it's like uh, Johnny Cash, but, uh, but it's a father. I'll walk the lawn. You know what I mean? Like Something like that. I think, I think you'll, you'll fit perfectly. Yeah. On It'd be very stupid. Country music. Country music is uh, it's a different, different beast. Different. <laughs> it's a different beast. It builds different. Yeah. Halo Udah Kerupia, jangan lupa buat follow Instagram dan TikToknya Folix di at folix.media. Kalian bisa ngikutin keasikannya Folix Media. Dan jangan lupa buat komen, like, subscribe YouTube-nya juga ya. Mari. Okay, so, okay, this is a long ass question. You are widely known as the song... With the song La La La, Edamami, a rapper, the viral pioneer by Rolling Stone magazine, and even the breakthrough artist of the year. Do you ever find the success you get turns into a boomerang that makes it difficult for yourself to move forward? Uh, that's a really deep question. It is. Uh, yes and no, because I mean, like, I wouldn't be here without both those songs. So, like, me doing this right now will propel me whether or not be a centimeter, whether or not be a whole meter like this, you know, I have no idea, Mm. but me doing everything, little thing will, I will assume it will help. Sometimes it doesn't. I posted a photo of me wearing a gimp and me getting dominated by a 75 year old woman. (laughs) And I legitimately lost 12,000 followers. And, you know, I don't personally care because those, we needed to weed those fuckers out, but it's funny because it's like, dude, how fragile are men, 
men are fragile. Their masculinity is, mm -hmm. and it's like, dude, like, let me post, let me do. If I'm if I'm trying to get dominated, let me get dominated. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> honestly, it was kind of fire getting whipped. Like, uh, like I, I'm I'm maybe maybe it birthed the kink. I don't know. Maybe, but uh, shit, like. Every little thing should help, right? Doing shows should help. And when it comes to like the success of my music, it's like sometimes like when you know you made a hit, you made a hit. Mm. And I, you know, I made La 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 and I, I remember talking to Y2K about it and be like, dude, like we were like, holy shit, this song is so fire. Like we, we knew from the moment we made it, we were like, we know. We didn't expect it to be as big as it was, okay. 100%. Like we, we both kind of like calculated. We we're like, yeah, this will about, do about 50 million first year. Mm -hmm. Ended up doing like 600. But- you know, you, you can't really, you can't really gauge that virality, but like we gave it, we gave it the turn wheel. We gave all the thought process, process into it and like how to market it, blah, 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 blah. And I was like on the come up, right, right. The cusp. And it was like perfect timing. And then edamame was just like, I got Rich Brian on it. And, uh, you know, we marketed a little bit and just, it's just a good song. So, you know, when you make it, when you make a good song, it should just fundamentally do pretty well. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't really care too, too much about the success of my music. Furthermore, like I would be ideal if every single song I put out was as big as a Harry Styles record. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That would be amazing. Okay. But it's just like, I have to be realistic, you know, like, uh, but at the same time, like people way below me, look at me and they're like, damn, like everything he drops goes crazy. So it's all relative. Right. Yep. And my family loves me <laughs> and I have money, so it doesn't matter. Nothing it matters. doesn't matter. Call me a nihilist, cool. but, uh, you know, everything doesn't really fucking matter. Okay, you mentioned about Rich Brian. Yeah. Um, do you have any other artists in mind that you want to collaborate with in the future? Dude, honestly, I want to make, make a tape with Rich Brian. I feel like it would be incredible. Mm -hmm. We ha we make very, very similar sounding music, I would say. And uh, we just got to make a tape. I got I, I, I to gotta just call his ass. Um uh, who do I want to work with? I really want to make a song with Pharrell Williams. Pharrell Williams. Yeah. That's He's the goat. Good. He's the goat. Uh, um, Timbaland would be super cool. I feel like Pharrell would probably make a little bit more sense. Um, yeah, honestly, that's like, coming to think of it, I don't really like collaborating with people that much. It's it's really hard to find people that are kind of like-minded and like how, how I make music is I just go in the studio and say a bunch of gibberish and if it sounds good, it sounds good. And like, you know, it's like sometimes when you when you go and do sessions with people, sometimes there's this weird pressure, mm -hmm. and like it's like a, almost like a competing pressure. And mm -hmm. like I hate that. I hate that shit. So you just want to have fun. That's why, stuff. like, when, when Gravy and I make music, like he's a frequent collaborator. We have another tape coming out next year, and when when we make music, it's like so much fun because we're just there just to have fun. And like when I made a song with Brian, it was the exact same vibe. And I'm like, dude, like this is what we got to do, bro. Like. And he, he just gets it. Like, he gets it. It's the same vibe. We, you know, we walk in the room, we start talking about dicks. And, like, you got to do you got to do You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, he's a great guy. Um, but, yeah, Pharrell, probably. I hope in the future, yeah. It, it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Okay, so the last but not least, uh, the last question. What are you going to say or what do you have to say to your Indonesian fans? I just say... Street Nasi Goreng and uh, Indomie. Indomie? Go Was it Indomie Goreng? Indomie Goreng. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indomie Goreng. Yeah. <laughs> Super good. Super fucking good. I, look, I, I, you know, I'm not spending enough time here. That's for you. Thank you. It's okay. No. <laughs> uh, I'm not spending enough time here, unfortunately, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to come back. One thing I found very interesting is. Uh, so when I did my show yesterday, usually mm -hmm. people come up to me and they're like, yo, man, that, that was a cool show. It was a fun show. But everyone said, thank you. And I was like, that's so like, you know, it's like, a, like so traditionally different, like culturally different mm -hmm. because like, I, I guess they're just appreciative of me coming here. You know, it's like, it's crazy. It's very cool. Um, and all I want to do is come back because, you know, I saw, I saw the real diehard fans in, 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 in front and, and, you know, I always give out a cookbook and I put the cookbook on the side and I was like, yo, who wants to cook, blah, 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 blah. And then I introduce I introduce the cookbook and I put it on the side and this guy just like jumps up on stage, grabs it. I'm like, bro, we got some crazy fans here. This is what I'm talking about. Like just people jumping up on stage trying to steal the steal the fucking cookbook. God damn it. Uh but yeah, no. I, I will be back as soon as I can, guys. Thanks for loving me out here. And uh 
Swag. Okay, swag. <laughs> okay, so um, next segment we have the Budak Rupiah question. Uh, those are the questions that came from uh, your fans. We posted on uh, Instagram. We got five questions from your followers. Okay, the first one is from the first one is from Elsa Elningtias. Do you eat edamame on daily basis? <sighs> I like it. it. I do think it's overpriced. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. sit down, at least at least in North America, you sit down. Let's say you get like 20 beans, maybe. You know, on a good day, 20 beans. And it's like $10. So that would be like, what is that? Like $140,000. So $10 for like 20 beans. It's like, I would rather just go buy like 10 nasi rings. You know what I'm saying? Like, like call me crazy, but that sounds like a better investment. Uh, also like they're kind of, they're okay. They're nothing against the edamame world, but I'm glad that I made a song. I'm, you know, the stocks went up. So you, edamame, all the people who manufacture edamame pay me motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get your royalty. Yeah. My royalty needs to come up for sure on that one. All right. Second question from at Paniu. What's your type of food? Edamame? I don't oh. think they're referring to food. Oh. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. He's- yeah, we're out here as hell. I, I am so tired. The paracetamol is starting to hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, the drugs, drugs. you took before. Um, uh, poo-poo, fuck off. Yeah, poo-poo, yeah. Uh, what is my type? You know, I don't know. I like, I've, you know, once you get old, er, er, er <laughs> older, older, I feel like, I mean, I don't have time for, a significant other, unfortunately, like I just don't. And it's like, it sucks because it would be ideal to have someone to love and, you know, vice versa. Um, but I, I was in a relationship for about two years before, we, you know, I went back on tour with COVID and everything and it was great. It was fine. But uh, I just found out that it was like not compatible as soon as I went back on tour. So, you know, I haven't met anyone that is like very like ready to potentially date a touring artist. Um, but I, I don't know. They, you just have to be compatible. Like it, it doesn't, doesn't matter like what my type what is. Type, yeah. yeah it, it's, I don't know. I've definitely figured out that like I need things from a significant other. And it's like, I need like tons of confidence. Cause like I would assume dating me would be kind of stressful to be completely honest. I'm not a fuck boy, but I just, I, I don't know. Like from the, on, on the other end of it, it must be way more difficult. Um, But yeah, as my type goes, like, they have to like food too. That's like the most important thing. Like we're not we're not going out for banging dessert dessert and banging mm-hmm. dinners. Like we're not banging. <laughs> we're not banging. <laughs> what can I say? Because <laughs> food food is food is like food is your king. Yeah, yeah, food food is my favorite thing. So All right. definitely. Cool. So the third one is from they love rap they love rapley. How did you have beard that perfect? A beard. A beard. Honestly, it takes a lot of time. I, I have a really, really like bad razor that I've had for like seven years. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it like, it hurts and it like grabs a piece of hair and it like pulls it. And it like, I, st- I don't know why I haven't bought a new one. It's like, honestly, it's like rusty too. So it's probably like dangerous. Um, <laughs> but once again, this is the ethos of baby no money. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not perfect right now. It doesn't look that good. It's kind of like, kind of like pubic. Uh, but It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. Next question from at Il 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 Fai Pong. Any other collaboration with Rich Brian? Yeah, we just dropped one. The Say La Vie song with Young Gravy. Okay. I mean, he's not on it very much, but uh, yeah. yeah, we wrote it in the studio together all one day. He's much. still involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. There. Yeah, it was a good time. Song's doing really, really well. So I think we'll end up doing a music video for it too. So cool. Yeah, we'll be waiting. Good. Last question from uh, Buddha Kurupia question from Nick Evening. Make a song with Warren Hugh? Question mark. I'm down. He's sick. He goes hard. I've I, I've talked to him like briefly. Okay. But uh, yeah, I haven't Never really talked about. It. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to making music with people, it's like super like people either like start with it or they like they're like yo let's hang out and then mm. and then it comes to the music world. But like also like I'm I'm kind of a weird brand. I have a weird brand where it doesn't really like make sense with a lot of other artists. So 
pretty hard for you to collaborate. Yeah. And honestly, like, it's just easier to make music by yourself because okay. I'm independent, right? Most people aren't, at, like, at least at my level. So what happens is you have to go through, like, the politics of the labels mm -hmm. and it's just, like, fucking waste my time. And uh, unless the artist is, like, pushing, helping pushing it through, it just, sometimes it just never gets done and it's kind of a nightmare. So, okay. but, but maybe in the future. Okay, cool. So we'll be waiting for all the co collaboration and we'll be waiting for the music video with yeah. Rich Brian then. Okay, this is the last part of our interview, which is song list question. Tell us your favorite song based on this list. The first one, a song that has many meanings to you. Oh, man. See, I don't really listen to much music, to be honest. But, but probably like my heart will go on. Okay. It's a good one. I'll take that. Yeah. My heart will go on. Second one. A song that you never get tired of. Crazy Frog. Axel F. What? Crazy Frog. Crazy Frog? You don't know Crazy Frog? I do the beep beep one, right? Yeah. It's so far. That song is incredible. Okay. Like anyone can get down with that shit. You know what I mean? Like Facts. anyone. So... So Crazy Frog is a song that you never get tired of. Never. I will never get tired of that song. <laughs> okay. Take that. A song that breaks your heart. Please don't say Crazy Frog. La 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 by Baby No Money and YTK. Oof. Yeah, it's a painful song to listen to. I, I like, I hear that song. You know when people like, people like notice me in public and they're like, I can hear it in the back because they notice me and they're like, it's this guy. It's this guy. And I'm like... Oh, why this song? Anything but this song. Just like, just like, don't turn this song on, please. But I mean, I it's obviously like a song. A, it has a lot of meanings to me because it's like it did all really well for me, and then it's also just a curse. It sounds. Mm -hmm. it's, did I really just forget that? You know what I mean? Like it's fucking. I remember the the year it blew up. My brother came home, and my brother's like one of those like older brothers where you're just like he's just like a little troll. Okay. And he, he used to play a violin and he woke, he would wake me up every single day during Christmas time at six in the morning, playing a, uh, like a melody on just like, just playing his violin. He'd be like, did I really just forget that melody? And he'd be like drunk in the morning. And I'm like, bro, you're a crazy, crazy character, but he makes good music too. So if you guys want to listen to my brother's music, it's called Gooch. G-U-U-O-O-O-C-H. Gooch. Gooch too. G-O-O-C-H. Like Gooch. Like between the ball and the ass crack. Gooch. Gooch. Yeah. Okay, guys. You can listen yeah. to his brother. Okay, next, uh, next song list question. A song that makes you happy. Huh. Men I Trust, Show Me How. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I such a good song. song. It's a really, really, really good, good song. song. Okay, uh, a song that is often stuck in your head. <laughs> Controversial, but uh, Remix to Ignition by R. Kelly. What is that? You don't know. I remix don't. to Ignition. Hot and fresh out of the kitchen. Mama wrote everybody got every man in it. Wish it. Say that so what? I'm drunk. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh. See, that's like the only song that I like. I know. Like, I don't even know my music. <laughs> but like, you know that song. Yeah. Cool. A song that you would... Love played at your wedding. Mm. Uh, All Star by uh, Smash Mouth. Why? Why not? Why not? Because Shrek. Shrek, dude, that, that song is so unbelievably tied to Shrek that like, it's just fire. I love Shrek. All right. A song that describes you. Holy shit. Uh, dude, I don't even know. I don't know how to describe myself. I feel like that's kind of like sociopathic <laughs> in itself. If you were to be like, oh, actually, well, this is exactly who I am. Uh, dude, probably Axel F, Crazy Frog. <laughs> I, I love Crazy Frog. Crazy <laughs> Frog. I'm sorry, my Indonesian came out. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're so, I think you really love Crazy Frog. Yeah, Crazy Frog is great. And his, little, his little penis too. Shit's so far. It's so fucking funny. I remember, I remember when Crazy Frog was like super popping. All the other would be like, 
crazy frog with like, it'd be like crazy, crazy frog and then crazy bullfrog and be like a massive cock on him. <laughs> she was sick, dude. Okay. That describes you a lot then. Crazy frog. Yeah. Okay, the, um, a song by an artist with a voice that you love. A voice. So I think that's an Oh, uh, just King Cruel. You know King Cruel? King Cruel, uh, K-R-U-L. Yeah, K-R, yeah, K-R-U-L-E. Yeah, yeah I you, think. You like the voice. Yeah, it's amazing. All right. I think it's, I think a song is called Easy Easy. That's, a, that's his like biggest song he's ever made. It's, it's fucking incredible. You, you should just listen to it. All right, I will. Yeah. Uh, last one. A song that you think everybody should listen to. Crazy Frog, Actual Life. <laughs> okay. Movie. <laughs> I think that song is quite popular here in Indonesia. It's it's popular. I it's popular everywhere. everywhere. True. Dude, it's like it's like Kumbaya, my lord. You know what I mean? Like Kumbaya, my lord. Okay. It's like it's like just as banging. Like everyone can sing along because like. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's fire. I'll wait for your remixes then, I guess. Crazy Frog featuring Baby No Money. Yeah, drum and bass remix of Crazy Frog. <laughs> that that bass. will go crazy. <laughs> Reverb and slowed. Yeah, reverb, slowed, drum and bass. Like Indonesian remix. Remix. Nasi goreng <laughs> With Baby No Money. <laughs> I think a lot of people will listen to that. Yeah, hell yeah. And report. That's all. All right. So I think that's it. Uh, we that's all the time that we have because you're such a busy guy. You need to go somewhere else. Thank you for coming oh, to you. this podcast. Um, thank you for coming to Jakarta. See, I I also say thank, thank you. you. See how we time that out perfectly. Shit. Should we kiss right now? Not yet. Not in front of the camera. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the interview. And shout out to Baby No Money. Anything else you wanted to say to Indonesian people? I'll be back soon. I don't know what else to say. We'll That's be, it. We'll be waiting. Oh, yeah, we'll be waiting. Hell yeah. Let's go. Next time, pull up to the show. Yeah, fuck the festival. Yeah, fuck the festival. I should have been booked on that festival. Yeah, man. Yeah. Why didn't you get booked? I don't know. Next time. Next time. Yeah, next All time. Right. So thank you for your time. Uh, I'll see you around then. Perfect. Thank, Thank you for you. watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye bye. Ciao. Thanks for watching. It's Baby No Money. And you tune into Folix. Make sure you watch all the other videos because they're all fun. <laughs>